So Celtic have won again against St Mirren, 2-1 in the end. Shane Duffy with another header and James Forrest with an unexpected header, not something he does every day. Overall, happy enough with that result. Get it done, get it dusted. Midweek fixture out of the way with no injuries as of yet. So hopefully now, clean bill of health going into the weekend and keep this momentum going. Overall, we'll start off with the starting lineup. I did predict in my team that Neil Lennon would go back to a back four. El Ahmed started as a right back. I thought he would have went with Chris Julian and Shane Duffy, but I suppose it makes more sense to actually get Christopher Iyer in there and rest Julian off because he did play at the weekend and he has been starting pretty much every game so far. So Shane Duffy and Christopher Iyer in the middle with Greg Taylor at left back again. And then it it kind of changed between a 4-3-3 and a 4-2-3-1 with uh, McGregor and Brown playing in the midfield uh, with James Forrest. Clamalla got a start and uh, Odson Edward and Ryan Christie as well making up that final uh, 11 so overall it, it wasn't the best performance if we start off with the first goal St Mirren took the lead after three minutes it's a bad corner to give away first of all but then the defending from that's even worse Ryan Christie he did make up for it later on in the game so you have to give him credit for that but his marking for that was pathetic it was really bad it was sort of a mixture between uh, going man to man and zonal he didn't pick up his man properly he kind of stumbled when the ball came in didn't expect it to come in shouldn't have beat the first man anyway but he should be tethered there to his man so lucky enough that they just that Celtic actually had the quality uh, to uh, overturn that result again uh, it is uh, Shane Duffy with his second goal in two games for Celtic now like I said in my video when he signed he is brilliant in the air he's going to be a hassle for everybody going forward uh, from from headers from set pieces like he did today very good finish accomplished finish for from a header and a good ball from Christie as well so Christie just about made up for his mistake then again a couple of good chances uh, before they actually take the lead a couple of nice intricate passes into the box Odson Edward probably could have scored a couple of minutes just before um, James Forrest uh, gave Celtic the lead but Overall, against St Mirren, what you're looking to do, you're looking to control possession. And I just have the stats up in front of me here. Overall, Celtic has 77% possession, 17 goal attempts, 9 on target, and 8 shots off target. 13 free kicks, 3 corners to St Mirren's 4. And overall, it was a dominant performance. The St Mirren goalkeeper had to take, uh, make 7 saves as opposed to Barkas making 1 overall in the game. So overall, it was a dominant display. Probably not as good and uh, as dominant as you would have wanted in terms of scoring goals. Uh, but if you look at the possession stats, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for Celtic to dominate these teams without exuding too much pressure or too much uh, energy. And especially with these midweek fixtures to get in uh, to the final whistle with a win and make up the points tally difference that... Um, that Celtic need to do because of the, uh, the the delay in the season because of volley, volley, volley. But the less said about that, the better. The second goal, like I said a couple of minutes before that, really nice intricate passing into the box. I think McGregor linked up with Christie, who played Edward in. Edward tried to put it under the goalkeeper. Unlucky not to go in, but that led to a corner, which led to a series of plays. And eventually, James Forrest got his head on. Uh, really, it was actually a really good header. It, was a, it wasn't the best ball in the world, but he got down nicely, got it into the net. Uh, Got good power behind the header, so it was actually it was a pretty nice goal from James Forrest, and not one that you would expect him to score from corners. So overall, into I I I'm, I would say Neil Lennon will come out and say that he's happy with that. Uh, a couple of changes to be made, but again, with Greg Taylor getting time under the system, with El Ahmed getting time under the system, Shane Duffy will only continue to improve when he gets uh, more and more game time. So these games are coming quick and fast. And to get into that international break, if Celtic win at the weekend now, then they can actually go top of the table uh, until, of course, Rangers play. And then if Rangers play on Sunday and, and when they go to, they go top. But Celtic have made up that gap now. And that's what's the mo most important part. Edward's penalty, probably poor. Uh, was it a penalty in the first place? Mm, it's it's hard to know. Then Probably eight, eight or nine times out of ten, those are given but it, it was a bit soft in the end. But in, in the end, it didn't really matter because Edouard didn't score it and they didn't need to score it. So ultimately, it is what it is. It's a midweek fixture against St. Mirren and got out of there with a win. That's all, you, that's all you really want. What do you want to see going forward in this game? Well, they're playing Livingston on Saturday at 3 o'clock. Anthony Stokes signed for Livingston, then didn't sign for Livingston because... Um, 
he didn't want to play on a plastic pitch. He didn't want to injure himself. Anthony Stokes, obviously, a former Celtic player, but he, he hasn't lived up to any of uh, the potential he had in his very earliest days and his post-career uh, has been a bit of a mess. So he won't be facing Celtic on Saturday against Livingston back in Parkhead. If Celtic win that, like I said, they can go top of the table until Rangers play on Sunday. So uh, going into that game against Livingston, what, what you want to see Celtic doing is making a couple of changes. I think they'll go back to three at the back with Christopher Ayer and Shane Duffy and Julian going into the team. Jeremy Frimpong come off the bench. I expect him to come in and probably Greg Taylor drop out again with maybe Olivier and Cham coming into the starting lineup. We're a little bit surprised that he didn't get any game time tonight. Very surprised that uh, Brown played the full 90 minutes. Surely there's going to be some time in the next week, week and a half, or month period at least, going into that uh, until the next international fixture that Scott Brown's actually going to get a rest. So I'm, I was shocked that he played the full 90 minutes and shocked that he actually started this game. So I don't know where the change is going to come, but I'd expect it to be a 3-5-2 against, uh, against Livingston at the weekend and get Ejeti back into the team. Klamala didn't have his best game, probably playing a little bit out of position tonight so that you can't really um, fault him too much. But ultimately, like I said, midweek Fisher against St. Mirren got the win, performed as good as they could do with the run of fixtures. What did you think? Did you think it was a good performance? Did you actually get to see this game? Because I know it wasn't on TV. I found it on a stream, a perfectly legal one, I will say that. But I found it on stream. Did you watch the game? What do you think of it? Probably not our best performance, but you get the win. What changes would you make to the team? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. More Celtic stuff coming down the line this weekend. I'm Andy Call has been calling it. We'll chat to you later.